Hey, what's up? Romain from Glebe Kitchen. If you've ever wondered why your curries don't taste like the ones you get in restaurants, stick around. Restaurant style Indian goes really fast. Once you start cooking, the last thing you want to do is be screwing around looking for ingredients. Trust me, I've been there. So do yourself a favor and do your prep, all of it, before you get started. There's a really easy way to chop onions or shallots. What I do is I hang the knife over the edge of the board so my hand clears. Then I make some horizontal cuts. After that, some vertical cuts lengthwise, and then you just slice in across the onion. Boom, you're done. If you didn't get all that because I was drawn on about prep, just back the video up. I don't actually remember how I used to cut onions. Once I learned this technique, I never looked back. There's tomato in just about every Indian curry. You can get it from pasetta or chopped pureed plum tomatoes, or you can do like I'm doing in this video and just use tomato paste. If you use tomato paste, make sure you dilute it with a little water. When we get to actually cooking the curry, you'll see why that's important. I like to be pretty precise when I'm measuring out the spices. I'm not saying agonize over it, but use measuring spoons. For this spice blend, I'm using a mix of Madras curry powder, Kashmiri chili powder, my own Indian restaurant spice mix, cassoir methi, and salt. If you don't use or have never heard of cassoir methi, you really need to get to know it. It's a total game changer. It's an herb the dried leaves of the fenugreek plant, and it really adds something special to Indian cooking. Don't worry about ingredients, by the way. There's a link to the recipe down below. There are two types of garlic ginger paste. There's the stuff you buy and the stuff you make yourself. The stuff you buy tastes like cardboard. The stuff you make yourself is phenomenal. Entirely up to you which one you want to use. I know which one I use. I go on a lot about blooming spices. If you follow Glebe Kitchen the blog, you've probably read it a hundred times. Now through the miracle of video, you get to hear me rant and rave about it. Sorry, I'm not actually really sorry. It's important. You need to learn this. You need to do it. You'll make better curries if you do. And that's why you're watching this, isn't it? This part always goes kind of the same. You add more oil than you think you need into a preheated skillet. You add your whole spices, then your aromatics, and then finally your ground spices. When you add your whole spices, cinnamon stick in this case, you want to see little bubbles forming around it. That's how you'll know you have the temperature right. After the whole spices have cooked for 15 or 20 seconds, add in your onion. You'll want to cook the onion until they're starting to brown on the edges and then add your garlic ginger paste. Garlic ginger paste has water in it. Water and oil makes for splatter. So stand back and watch yourself. Now we're at the moment of truth, the make or break point of your curry. Powdered spices hit hot oil and magic happens. This is why you're using more oil than you think you need. Too little oil and you risk the spices sticking. And if they stick, they can burn. And if they burn, you're starting over. You want to cook the powdered spices for about 30 seconds. Give all those wonderful oil-soluble compounds a chance to permeate the oil. If things look like they're going sideways for you though, just add the tomato paste immediately. Might not be quite as tasty that way, but it'll be a whole lot better than eating burned spices. Up until now, the heat has been kind of medium-low. Once the tomato paste goes in though, it's safe to crank the heat. And high heat is exactly what you want for the next phase of cooking this curry. The observant among you will have noticed that I've had a pot to my right just simmering away on the stove. That's my curry base. Curry base is really just a whole lot of boiled onions, but it's what allows restaurants to crank curries out to order. It's what replaces those deeply browned onions in traditional Indian cooking. It's the combination of high heat, the amino acids, and the sugars in the onions that give you that delicious browning flavor that is the Maillard reaction. I like to add the curry base in batches. I usually add about a half ladle to get started. I give it a stir and let it cook about 90 seconds. Notice how hard it's bubbling. That's important. It's also incredibly messy. I don't have a way around it either. I just suck it up because I know it's totally worth it. The whole process gets repeated two more times. A full ladle of gravy, give it a stir and let it cook 90 seconds. Rinse and repeat. Once your sauce starts to look like the sauce in my pan, it's time to add the chicken. I'm using pre-cooked chicken here and there's a reason. Restaurants use pre-cooked chicken because it's faster. But chicken also releases a lot of liquid when you cook it. And that liquid will make your curry runny. Once you've added the chicken, all that's really left is to let the curry simmer. Three to five minutes usually does it. Remember to turn the heat down at this stage or you're going to have one burnt mess on your hands. At this point, all that's left is to add a little fresh lemon juice to add brightness to the curry. I edited a bunch out of this video, but from the time the oil hit the pan to the time I took that bite was about 10 minutes. Told you it goes fast. There's a link to the recipe on Glebe Kitchen down below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please hit the subscribe button or give me a like. And remember, Life's too short for bad food.